Welcome to Pandora Cigar Box. I'm Pandora and today I'm going to be talking about how to smoke a cigar. Now I know that for some of you out there this will be tantamount to explaining to your granny how to suck eggs. So I'll understand if you click away to this playlist to watch some of my cigar reviews. For the rest of you, let's get going and talk cigars. Choosing your cigar. There are a few things that you need to consider when deciding which cigar to smoke how long you've got to spend with it, where you are in your cigar journey, what kind of tastes and flavour profiles you enjoy, and what your budget is. Let's break each of these down. Time. A cigar is a natural artisan product. Upwards of 300 pairs of hands have crafted it from seed to stick over the course of three years or so. Bearing that in mind, you don't want to rush your way through a cigar, but rather give it the time and respect it deserves. If you're short on time, choose a smaller cigar like a half Corona or a Perla. If you've got more time, choose something a bit more substantial. Experience. If you've been smoking cigars for a long time, you'll probably be able to take a full-bodied Maduro Churchill or Grand Corona in your stride. If you're still new to the hobby, you might want to choose something lighter bodied and shorter, like a Claro Robusto or a Colorado Petit Corona. Pride always comes before a fall, so don't be goaded into smoking something too big or too strong for you. If in doubt, ask around for suggestions. Tastes. With food or wine, you'll have certain flavours that you really enjoy and others that you try to avoid. The same goes for cigars. Personally, I really dislike flavoured or sweetened cigars, so I stay clear of them. If you like something spicy, try a cigar from Nicaragua, something a little nuttier, perhaps Honduran is more your thing. Again, if in doubt, most people working in humidors will be able to point you in the right direction. Budget. Don't be fooled into thinking that only expensive cigars are worth smoking. There are plenty of good quality budget cigars out there on the market. Check out this video for some of my favourites. There's nothing worse than spending money on an expensive cigar and ending up being disappointed. You know what you can afford, so don't be embarrassed if you only want to spend a small amount on a cigar. Inspect and smell. Having decided what sort of cigar you want to smoke, it's important to choose a good one. If you can handle cigars, do so. Give it a gentle squeeze from head to foot. Not too hard though, you don't want to crack the wrapper. Does it feel evenly packed? Does the wrapper look smooth and even without any holes, blemishes or large veins? If it isn't cellophane wrapped, does it smell appetising? If the answer to all of these questions is yes, then the chances are you've got a good cigar. If you don't like the look or smell of a particular stick, then put it back and choose a different one. Cut and cold draw. Having purchased your cigar, the next thing to do is cut it and start savouring the taste. If you're unsure of how to do that, check out this video here where I talk you through the different types of cutters and when I use each of them. Once your cigar is cut, you can take what's known as the cold draw. This is simply when you suck air through an unlit cigar. It allows you to check the draw on the cigar and gives you a hint as to the sorts of flavours that you might get from the tobacco once the cigar is lit. Lighting and first sips. Once you're happy with how your cigar is being cut, you're now ready to light it. This video here will walk you through how to light your cigar if you need a little help with that. Once lit, you can take your first sips on the cigar. Take your time, let the cigar rest between drawers. This will have the double benefit of reducing the chances of you getting cigar sickness, as well as allowing the flavours in the cigar to develop. Don't inhale. Don't be tempted to take the smoke into your lungs. A cigar is not an oversized cigarette and shouldn't be smoked like one. The alkaline nature of cigar smoke makes this a very unpleasant experience. What you actually want to do is suck a mouthful of smoke in, let it sit in your mouth, gently float around, and then release it. Take your time. As I said earlier, a cigar is a handcrafted natural product that is designed and deserves to be savoured. You shouldn't chug away on your cigar like it's going out of fashion. If you do, you'll overheat the cigar and risk what's known as hotboxing it. This can lead to plumes of bitter smoke and an acrid taste of ammonia. There's also a good chance that you'll be making friends with some porcelain rather quickly. Holding a cigar. Cigar snobs say that there is only one way to hold a cigar correctly, and to them I say poppycock. Granted, there are certain ways that are more frowned upon than others, such as clenching it between your teeth and chomping down on it. 
I'll often change how I'm holding a cigar whilst I'm smoking it, swapping it from hand to hand. If you've watched any of my reviews here on YouTube or read any of them over on my website, you'll probably have seen me use a cigar dagger as I reach the end of the cigar. I've also seen people use cigar pipes. The important thing is that you hold the cigar the way that is most comfortable for you. Retro hailing. Did you know that we taste more through our nose than we do through our mouth? It's for this reason that a lot of people advocate the retrohale as a way to get the maximum flavour out of whichever cigar it is you're smoking. When done correctly, this really adds to the cigar smoking experience. Get it wrong, however, and it's a surefire route to a very unpleasant feeling all round. If you haven't tried to retrohale before, I'd suggest trying it in the first third of a light-bodied cigar so that if you don't enjoy it or you get it wrong, you don't burn the back of your nose or throat and start sneezing everywhere. What I do is breathe in through my nose, hold it whilst I take a small draw, close my mouth and with the tip of the tongue against the back of my teeth, I sigh out through my nose which takes the smoke out of my mouth and through my nasal passages. Roll off the ash, don't tap. A long ash is a sign of both a great cigar and a good cigar smoker. It also helps to protect the burning ember of the cigar and can enhance the flavour. It's therefore desirable to keep the ash on your cigar for as long as possible. This is easier to do with some cigars than others. A Lancero, with its narrow ring gauge for example, will be harder to long ash than a Robusto. When you get to the point that you're unsure of how much longer the ash will hold, you want to roll off the ash rather than tap it off like you would with a cigarette. To do this, hold your cigar carefully against the edge of the ashtray and gently roll it along the wall. If the ash is ready to detach, this will be effortless and you'll end up with a neat ball of ash in the ashtray. If it isn't ready, don't push harder. Take another draw or two and then try again. Removing the band. There's a lot of debate in the cigar world about when you should take your band off your cigar. Some people say that it's vulgar to smoke a cigar with the band on. Others say you should only smoke up to the band. If there's a band or ribbon on the foot of the cigar, you need to take this off before you light up. As for the main band, I tend to smoke within about half a centimetre before I remove the band and then carry on smoking. Whatever your preference, you want to be careful about how you remove the main band. A lot of the time the band will either just slip off or the heat from the cigar will have loosened the glue enough to let you peel it off without damaging the wrapper. Sometimes though the band is badly glued and removing it will either split the wrapper or take some of it off with it. If this happens it usually isn't the end of the world providing the wrapper doesn't split right the way to the head. If this happens you may be able to carry on smoking the cigar but proceed carefully. When and how to finish. There are as many opinions about when you should stop smoking a cigar as there are cigar smokers. I've known people who smoke only the first half of a cigar, others who'll smoke to the band and no further. Some people, myself included, will often smoke a cigar right down to the last few millimetres. My advice would be smoke the cigar for as long as you're enjoying it. I don't smoke every cigar to the nub. I've had some cigars that I've barely smoked half of because I really wasn't enjoying them. However much of the cigar you end up smoking, when you've had enough, just lay the soldier in the ashtray and let it die. Stubbing or crushing it out like a cigarette is undignified and will release an acrid smoke that those around you will not appreciate. In summary, cigar smoking needn't be intimidating. For the most part, the cigar community is friendly and welcoming. There are always people ready to answer any questions you may have and share advice and experience with those of you who are new to the hobby. If you've got any questions, why not drop them in the comments below? And if you found this video useful, why not give it the thumbs up and subscribe for cigar reviews, cocktail recipes and generally helpful stuff like this.